Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. Lots to talk about today. Going to dive into this SEC challenge of an NFT project and the settlement they had there. Talk a little bit about Zynga's uh, game that's coming out a little bit more from them. A really big art sale, 33 ETH art sale. Let's dive right into it, starting off with a quick market overview. I mentioned yesterday that volumes were below 5,000 ETH, one of the first times that had happened since July of 2021. Uh, and it happened again, up a little bit from yesterday, but uh, still very low volumes. Uh, this chart here looks at the percentage of trades on Blur, which are sellers dumping into bids. It's actually percentage of ETH volume. Uh, which is sellers dumping into bids. So what you can see is that ratio is actually at a pretty low level versus where it's been. That's a positive thing. This is the past seven days. 57% of ETH volume is sellers dumping into bids. Still feels like a lot, but when you look at it relative to history, it's on the low end of where we've been in season two for Blur. Uh, Blur had 64% volume, kind of right in the middle of where they've been versus where they were. Uh, but still below kind of that 70 to 80 ETH range where Blur used to be. Large cap index broadly flat. I uh, saw some strength in captains and then weakness in Moonbirds, Zuki, Cool Cats, mid cap index up a small bit with some real strength in Quirkies, which have been pretty strong. Quirkies kind of uh, a project I used to follow pretty closely. I don't own anymore, but having a little bit of a comeback here. If you look at this chart, you can see that at least over the past few months, uh, you know, we're kind of toward we're about 80% higher than where the where the floor price troughed around 0.4 all the way up to nearly 0.8. Kind of an interesting project to follow because it does when, when NFTs seem to be down and out, Quirkies uh, tends to be a project that does decently well. Sam Spratt Editions really sold off last night down to about three and a half to four ETH after uh, a handful of finalists were announced. Uh, but right after that, it just bounced right back. Right now, the floor is around 6.9 ETH. We had sales up at six ETH again. So just a lot of interest in Sam Spratt NFTs right now. And I want to throw this in a friend tech users chart, basically how many people are trading every day. So I should say traders, but we had 7,100 yesterday. That's down 80% versus just a week ago. So there's still activity. They're still doing over 100,000 US dollars of fees per day. So making a lot of money on their side. Uh, but at the same time, that user growth that was really quite exponential last week has, has kind of turned the opposite direction. In terms of art projects, uh, three gazers trades, all different gazers. We'll show you uh, one of those. And then two chromy squiggles. Everything else did less than 10 ETH of volume. Let's have a quick look. This ribbed squiggle uh, is a harmonic and it sold for 22.5 ETH. So, you know, well above the floor. Uh, there were three gazer sales. This was the highest price one, which sold for 12 ETH. The other two sold between 10 and 11 ETH. We, you know, one was bought, one was sold into bids. A Memories of Chi Lin here sold for five ETH. That's well above the floor of four. And then there was a QQL, which sold a week ago or so for 3.2, and it got resold here for 3.6 ETH. Wanted to have a quick look at this harmonic squiggle. Remember, uh, harmonic squiggles are when the colors of the rib, the color of the rib is identical to one of the backgrounds in the chromy squiggles. And when you push space bar on chromy squiggles, you get a bunch of different background colors. And here you can see that the gray rib blends in perfectly with the gray background. Here is the buyer karate kid uh, kind of saying, this is a kind of the kind of squiggle he wanted for a long time. He says since January, 2021. So congrats to him. Always exciting when you get an NFT you've wanted for two and a half years. Second thing to talk about, the SEC enforces against an NFT project. And I believe this is one of the first times we've actually seen real enforcement. Here is a headline basically saying SEC issues first, inform first enforcement action targeting NFTs. The agency ruled that Impact Theory's NFTs were sold as unregistered securities. Impact Theory is the company. The NFT is called Founders Key. Uh, and it's been, yeah, it's been a project that has actually been around for a long time and continues to trade almost two years old. Uh, it's done 3,266 ETH of volume, 10% creator royalty. So kind of a, a pretty active project. This looks at, there are three different tiers of NFTs. And what you can see it has a top tier, a mid tier, and a bottom tier. Uh, and, but what you can see is that the top tier, you know, still, you, you know, even today is seeing trades kind of in the 0.6 to 1 ETH range, uh, obviously down a fair bit from where it was right after the mint. Uh, but certainly an NFT that it, it basically, that, that certainly has not kind of faded away entirely. The project raised 
30 million dollar selling NFTs in 2021. The complaints or they said that they were trying to be like an early Disney, implying that people would make a lot of money, said the money would be going would go towards building out the business further, which would generate further returns for buyers of the NFTs. And these statements all suggest that the NFTs were an investment in the business, which would make them securities by the Howey test. So I think that that was it was a pretty clear case for the SEC to go after, although there were two commissioners in the SEC who dissented against this, basically saying, this is happening so much. How do you differentiate what is what? Where do you draw the line between a collectible uh, and another an NFT, which is a security? So there were some people who disagreed. But in the end, the project agreed to pay $6.1 million in fines. They must establish a fund to return money to investors that to destroy the NFTs that were in their treasury, remove royalties, uh, take change the wording on their website. None of this has actually been done. I showed you the OpenSea page from this morning where creator royalties are still 10%, um, but we will see kind of how this evolves. That is an agreement that has already been settled uh, between them and the SEC, although they did not admit wrongdoing. A couple of the quotes that were in their wording, uh, which the SEC quoted, they said, if you're paying 1.5 ETH, you're going to get uh, some massive amount more than that. So no one is going to walk away saying, oh man, I don't think I got value here. I'm, freakish, I'm freakishly bullish on that. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that is true. So basically the founder here uh, talking about it like it is kind of an investment in them that he's going to be returning value. I think all of these things make it harder for them to say they're not a security. I think saying things like that you're bullish, that you're bearish, talking these ways about the NFTs, you know, it, it's just something that I, you know, I think there are so many projects that have done this. There's so many, I, like if you read these quotes, I feel like these quotes apply to a lot of different projects. So a lot of different projects probably have some risk here. And one of the interesting things is that this project only raised $30 million. I mean, $30 million is a lot of money, but in the past, a lot of the headlines have been about Coinbase, about Ripple, about uh, you know, projects with hundreds of millions of dollars billions of dollars. So seeing them go after a smaller project is kind of interesting. And it certainly raises questions about what potential projects could be up next for SEC uh, action. And we will definitely uh, keep track of that. Third thing to talk about, Zynga is launching the first NFT-based game of theirs. Now, this is something that's been in the news for a couple of weeks. I haven't covered it, but wanted to talk about it today because it's certainly interesting. Uh, here are some headlines from our friends at Decrypt. Farmville creator Zynga reveals first ETH Ethereum NFT game, Sugartown. And there is an image kind of from their imagery at the bottom. Now, who is Zynga? You know, they they were founded in 2007, one of the first real like Facebook-based, social-based uh, game creators. They created Farmville. They created Words with Friends. If you're a boomer like me, 41 years old, if you're in the older side, these are definitely games that you are familiar with. So a very established gaming company that has figured out how to make money in the gaming space, building an NFT game. Very interesting to see. Again, it's called Sugar Town. This is from their website. And a couple of things they say on their website. One is that their mission is to empower people with Web3 ownership uh, through fun and enduring games. Community is everything, trying to engage, listen, and build with their community. They also say it is a transmedia franchise that redefines interactive entertainment, pushing the limits of creativity and innovation. And they also said that is meant to be a platform and an ecosystem as opposed to simply a game. As a holder, you get access to experiences and have input into the vision to expand Sugar Town through accessibility and user generated content. So, really kind of pushing that platform idea as opposed to one game individually. A few more things they say. One is that the auras are the first collection and they give holders to add to access to the platform and the ecosystem. They also build games and cook up new experiences for holders. It is a free mint. Uh, so it is a free mint to get them, but you must be on the allow list uh, in order to get an aura. Uh, here is a tweet from them basically where they said that they decided to make it free. And I think that this doesn't surprise me too much. It's kind of, I think it is in line with a lot of games to get the users first, get the users playing. And from there, that's when you want to spend. So bring in those users. It is always kind of an interesting approach to charge people a lot of money for NFTs before the game even exists. Uh, it's just a bet on the on the future of the games. You know, I think here they're saying, let's get the people on first. Let's get them building. And with that, the value will start to accrue to the NFTs over time. Now, the allow list has largely been formed, but they also tweeted today that if you did not get an allow list, don't worry, there's another chance they have a pre-mint drawing, uh, which will be the last allow list mint phase before public. So go check that out. Go to the Sugar or visit Sugartown Twitter account. There's a pre-mint link there where you can sign up to be in the drawing to get one of those Alala spots. Interesting stuff though, C given Zynga you know, has so much experience kind of building and innovating in the gaming space, certainly an interesting thing to see them getting involved in our space. And then lastly, let's talk about a few notable sales, starting out with this piece, crazy huge sale, 33 ETH, 
for this piece, Ethereal by Nude Yoga Girl. Now, Nude Yoga Girl has a lot of sales that have been in this range, 25 ETH, 30 ETH, 32 ETH, 34 ETH. These are big sales she's had in the past, but to do it in this market is something quite special, almost at her all-time high, 33. It's just, just a huge sale. And here she is saying, speechless and grateful. It's an absolute honor to know that this important piece of her journey is part of your amazing collection. Talking to the collector who is Space Sprockets. Now, when I was looking through Nude Yoga Girl, I saw that a lot. Some of the things she was talking about earlier was some art she had done. And I commented on the show, but I didn't know who the artist was because the artist appeared anonymous on OpenSea. And then here she is uh, talking about how art that I talked about back at the beginning of the month was her that sold for six E. So you can see that Nude Yoga Girl has not just this photography style, but also these other styles uh, that are quite big in the space. And she did have another sale, Anonima, uh, under the pseudonym Anonima, which sold for three ETH. And the buyer here was Cyborg Nomad. So congrats to, uh, congrats to Nude Yoga Girl. Uh, just two massive, massive sales, but certainly, you know, that 33 ETH sale, really crazy. And then in this pseudonym, also having a 3 ETH sale, here she is saying she's so happy. Anonymous collection behind every mask, there is a story. If you know, you know, congrats to Cyborg Nomad as well. Also want to talk about this piece. What's between heaven and hell by absolutely wrong. This is a 3 ETH, a 3 ETH sale. Another one you got to see the motion because really it kind of has a little bit of that X, uh, X copy motion. Uh, very cool image. Uh, from him. Absolutely wrong. Has had a handful of sales kind of in this range, in this three to four ETH range. All very cool art. Uh, definitely enjoyed uh, browsing through uh, the collection there. And then from his bio, doesn't say a whole lot. Has a bunch of different kind of one-liners. Give a little bit of insight into him. He says, art saved me. If you're sensitive, you'll feel it. Artist, comma, I guess. So a bunch of different uh, bio one-liners on the different websites uh, that describe this artist. And then lastly, kind of back in the PFP space, there's one sale I did want to talk about or a trade I wanted to talk about, which is an Opepin from those edition ones. And those edition ones have been selling kind of in that 17 to 30 ETH range. One of them sold for two chromy squiggles, very nice aesthetic chromy squiggles, but probably uh, floor chromy squiggles more or less. And we know the floor there is around 9.9, 10 ETH. So uh, about a 20 ETH trade for this Opepin, probably a little bit more liquid for those squiggles if they want to sell them, or perhaps they've just wanted uh, those chromy squiggles to hold. But interesting sale. Uh, seems like a good trade for both sides. And uh, yeah, congrats to both those guys there. That is all from me today. I hope you like the show. I'm actually not going to be able to do a show tomorrow. I have to travel with my family uh, just to make things easier. I decided not going to do a show tomorrow, but I'll be back on Thursday. I'll be back in Colorado uh, and I will be doing a show then. Look forward to seeing you then. If you like this one, give us a like, tell us what you think of the comments, subscribe to the channel, and we will talk to you soon. Have a great day.